Hey guys, Sanjay Malangtala here. I hope you are having a good week. Uh, this was a great podcast episode I recorded with Instagram, fashion blogger, influencer, digital marketer, social media, personality, Ashwati Balakrishnan. We talked about a lot of cool things, specifically the journey of somebody into the fashion blogging world, what a typical day in the life is, dealing with haters on Instagram, bad comments, following your passions, following your dreams, and a bunch of other cool stuff. They are in the show notes. Check them out. Please do rate and review, and I'll see you guys next week. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kill this. Birdie num num. Hello. Birdie num num. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Birdie Num Num podcast, the BNN. I am excited again this week, as I am every week, uh, when we do have a guest. And today's guest, um, I know you guys are going to like, maybe you have seen her all over the social medias uh, of our interwebs here in Bangalore. Uh, Miss Ashwati Balakrishnan, how are you? I'm great, Sanjay. How are you? I'm very good, dude. I'm very good. I'm excited about this week's podcast because this is an industry that's been fascinating me, which you are a part of. For- yeah, it's been a couple of years and uh, even I'm like pretty fascinated how the industry is growing. Uh-huh. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to you know, discuss sure. more about this. Yes, yes. And for those of you wondering, well, what industry is this? Um, <laughs> if the title of the episode wasn't clear, um, basically, uh, Ashwati is, um, you know, one of the top fashion blogger, influencer, social media personalities, I would say, uh, in our lovely city and greater parts of India. And Ashwati, if you could give a background for those of the listeners who may not know, just in a few sentences, you know, how you came to be where you are. Um, so by profession, I'm a civil engineer. Oh, of so, course. <laughs> Every episode, so, <laughs> I interview creative people, and it's what I did after engineering. But yes, go yeah, on. I, I think like in India, like after engineering is when you actually decide what you should be doing yeah, in yeah. life. You know. So um, yeah, by profession, I'm a civil engineer, and uh, I got placed in Shoba Developers, okay. and I worked there for like couple of days because uh, <laughs> a couple of days, couple of days, because like I didn't quite like the environment. Uh, uh, you know, it's not what I thought how civil engineering would be, you know. Meaning like, it was like, look at the spreadsheet and draw these schematics? Yeah, or what I was mean, it? like, it was a, you know, desk space given for me and mm. it was nothing like, you know, like what I thought of, you know. Probably like hard some, hat on the building skyscraper. Yeah, like, I yeah. mean, some interesting work, nothing. And like, otherwise, like what I had to do was like, you know, go to the site and mm-hmm. uh, the site was like way too far for me, you sure. know. So I didn't quite find that very interesting so um yeah whatsoever like I mean it didn't really work out for me then I moved to like uh, Zomato I worked there for like a year okay um and uh, post which is when I joined this company called Woopler and uh, you know Woopler is a fashion app uh, and uh, that's how like I I just wanted to make sure like whatever I'm doing and uh, the industry that I work in should, uh, you know, like be Line go up. hand in hand because uh, then what happens is like, I mean, you're not really doing something different. You know, you're doing the same thing, like whether you're at work or whether you're, you know, blogging otherwise. Sure. So how I got into blogging is actually, um, you know, blogging was really like popping pretty much in 2016. And uh like as an Instagrammer, like, you know, I was just going through the feed and I kept seeing like a lot of bloggers and fashion was an industry that I that I was always, always keen on. Mm-hmm. But uh, I couldn't really like pursue, uh, you know, like a degree in that. But uh, I always wanted to try my hands uh, in the, uh, you know, fashion field. So I thought, why not blogging? Because uh, it's a personalized space where there is nobody asking you or telling you what exactly you should be doing. Uh, and uh, it's 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 your personal space to like express your personal style. Sure. So even when you go to like uh, my Instagram, you would always say personal style blogger. It's mm-hmm. not a fashion blogger because uh, oh, okay. my feed mostly talk about like you know it, it basically talks about the kind of things that is too personal for me. You know like whether it's fashion, food, or like you know travel, anything. Because uh, whatever I show on my feed should actually be functionable according to me sure you mean like usable not high concept or anything yeah see high concept is fine but your feet shouldn't 
only big high concepts you know then yeah. they, it it's completely fine You're like wearing a hat in the shape of a dosa or something like whatever <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah. think it's really practical <laughs> for like bangalore <laughs> yeah 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 so okay. uh i mean i try my best to be in uh in the side of practicality mm-hmm. and uh, that's how i started fashion so it was not fashion blogging it was not something very different for me whatever i used to do on a daily basis i just started using hashtags okay yeah got it. so that's how i started and then there were like many brands out there like collaborating with different bloggers and influencers and things like that mm-hmm. and uh, there was this uh, contest that was going on lifestyle uh, by lifestyle it was called uh, insta star and mm-hmm. uh, was basically like you know use a particular hashtag yeah. and, and uh, for the out of india listeners lifestyle is a big retail clothing yeah, brand it, right yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's one of my favorite brands so okay. uh, yeah like we go way long back so, sure sure uh so they were running this contest called uh, lifestyles insta star so i kind of participated in that and i won that contest okay. and uh you know what in return they gave was an experience you know like a shoot with lifestyle oh, so I you know see. at the starting of my career like probably like 2 months into blogging getting an exposure like that is big really yeah. really helped me and meeting the team and you know like i had a different uh, perception about the you know feel and the industry because like i like i belong nowhere to fashion you sure. know like and uh, you know when i got into it it was a difficult space for me you know i i didn't know if i could and uh, so that's how like everything started so for me it started good and yeah. uh, and then the pain came later yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, so it just went on and on from there yeah, yeah. no i love that uh, i love what you just said at the end there because that's exactly how it was for me with comedy and i think a lot of creative and non-traditional uh people for example i just started after my you know day at accenture working in the it company i started doing comedy in mm-hmm. some bars that had open mic nights yeah and then a week later like a big company like a lifestyle it was like i think canon cameras ironically or some one of these printer companies was like hey we need a comedian and we heard yeah. about you and i was like i was like oh i'm a comedian <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'm a comedian who does this professionally okay and you know i whatever it happened from there but that's okay so just to recap if i understand correctly you were as is everybody in india an engineer first yeah. and you were doing that how long were you at that company for like a month six months like uh, not even that much not, like <laughs> oh my god there's so I, many corporate guys like oh sorry princess you don't want to pay her dues you know but okay so you but very quickly had less the, than a month like let's keep it at that less than a month yeah. okay so, so <laughs> There were people like you in my office who I would say stay for a year. But <laughs> but understood. Yeah. So you but that I mean it takes a strong personality to know that even if I'm 10 years into this or I make my 1 CR after 10 years, I don't care. I don't want it. So you were like I don't want that. No. Even I can look at my boss's boss and uh, don't want to do that. So you very quickly were like and your parents were okay with the fact that you quit after a month? Absolutely not because uh <laughs> not <laughs> Because my yeah. mother uh, was a principal and okay. uh, I thought you were going to say princess. Yeah. <laughs> no, principal. So like, you know, um for her education is so important, important. and yeah. uh, I'm from Kerala. So um you know, I, if, like people in Kerala, I, I wouldn't say people in Kerala, like at least like I come from a place where you know like we feel like education is everything sure. and uh, you know creative field is just for you to you know like pursue it as passion but not yeah. as a profession sure. you know so you should definitely have a job and then do whatever you want yeah. you know that's the way like things go they don't like, realize your passion could be your profession not yeah, just carolites I mean, but anybody yeah, yeah like i mean at least then like uh, i mean my family didn't know like if i could just like you know pay my bills with passion sure. and uh, i was nowhere so they were just like okay like i mean uh, you don't want to do anything in civil like what's your next thing So I was just like it's it's not that I don't want to do anything with regards to civil engineering my job should be something that uh I would want to go for like every day like I should wake up and be like I want to go to my I want to go to work you know mm-hmm. that should be the feeling not like oh my god why am I going yeah so um that's when like I joined Zomato because it was a fun young team and uh and Zomato from what I remember not to interrupt you but I yeah. have a habit I'm trying to get better no, at no, that's it that's completely fine <laughs> Zomato is from what I understand correct me if I'm wrong one of the forefronts since 2013 14 15 in social media like they use it properly they know how to execute on yeah. memes and all that stuff i remember there was a controversy 
uh, that they said Delhi is the hub of IT, but it was actually bank. But they know how to play the social media. <laughs> yeah, game. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I would say, like Zomato is a very uh, like as a company, they have a really solid uh, team, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they focus on issues at the very beginning. So uh, I can mean, you give least, us an example? Um, so uh, when I was working uh, at Zomato, that's when like online ordering was launched. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I remember, like, I mean, we were very successful in Bangalore and immediately they moved to Kerala. Oh, you know, like, I mean, they didn't um, wait until like, you know, a good, uh, probably like a month or a good start, nothing, because uh, they were very particular that like, you know, we got to go all out. Yeah. So like that way. Yeah. Like. I think that's because like the company has a lot of young people and mm-hmm. they all are like very enthusiastic. And so. they're all social media avid users yeah, yeah. and Instagrammers. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that way, like I think as a company, uh, they are uh, amazing. And sure. for a start, it was really good for me. And uh, like it was more or less like interacting with many different people for me. Uh, so like uh, I worked as a sales manager. So, okay. you know, it was interacting with like a lot of different restaurant uh, owners and, uh, you know, like understanding their issues and how they reached where they are. And like all these kind of different uh, things like kind of inspired me a lot. Like, you know, like, and also hey. like understanding like different things. And that's like, I really like my job at Zomato. Uh, but fashion was always something that was like, like there back of my head so you know like when i got an opportunity i just okay but 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 taking it back to uh your mother you were saying before i interrupted you so your mom was kind of not panicking but you know betty like what are you gonna do and how's the plan completely went somewhere yeah no no no. that's partially my fault the (laughs) listeners are like no talk about your mother hating your guts for not doing that okay so so she she was she was saying all that stuff then in the meantime you got a job at zomato just to kind of keep the parents see I'll, i'll tell you okay why i joined zomato uh because um the plan was uh I'll do my engineering in Bangalore and then I get a job in Bangalore and I settle down in the engineering yeah. uh, work know, stream. Yeah, work yeah. stream. Uh, but otherwise, my parents wanted me to go back. Okay. You know, because yeah. like we're based out of uh, Kerala. Yeah. yeah. So she's like, okay. why are okay. you staying yeah, back? Yeah. So for me, um, like I, I wanted to get a job and uh, like I also wanted something that's pretty interesting. Sure. And that's the reason why I went for Zomato. Okay. You know, these two reasons. So just to, okay, but just, just to simplify, so yeah. you were in the engineering, you quit the engineering, you told your parents, your parents like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, either come back, um, whatever. But in but then while that was happening, you got a job at Zomato. Yeah, I got a job yeah. at Zomato. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it was really nice. And uh, like, but my mind was always towards fashion. fashion. And uh, like towards the end of Zomato is when like, you know, I started like, uh, getting into the fashion blogging side Mm -hmm. and uh, I started posting about my outfits and you know I was so embarrassed because like I was just like what are my friends gonna think so (laughs) I just like slyly put some hashtags here and there Uh like Bangalore blogger fashion blogger and things like that living my dream hashtag live the dream (laughs) yeah love my life insta life or whatever yeah yeah yeah. and then uh like obviously like there were two kinds of people like in like even my friend circle like some of them are like what the fuck are you doing yeah 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 <laughs> like this is a clean like, podcast by the way she said what the front <laughs> oh. yeah yeah no problem yeah yeah and uh, some of them were like uh, i mean like ashuti go for it you know it, yeah this is good you know whatever but nobody knew where blogging would be in 2016 because it was just like okay posting pictures on instagram with particular hashtags yeah it was basically that so that's a fantastic segue to my next question. So yeah. you've told us basically you were in engineering then you went to Zomato. And then as you were in Zomato, you were getting more experience in social media, recognizing what's happening in the world. And then you started playing around with yeah. Instagram and posting and giving advice and hashtags. Now, we all have that friend. OK, <laughs> every single one of us has that friend that we love to judge and we love to hate on that <laughs> immediately starts posting, uh, you know, a picture, a selfie. <laughs> Uh, the feet on vacation in Goa or whatever. And then we're like, oh, then they keep coming with the posts and we're like, oh, here we go. You know, now she's a dreamer. She's a wanderer. She's a wanderlust and all that stuff. And the misconception that I think I have, and I've done jokes about this, and, and I'm very curious to get your take on this is 
just like a lot of people in 2016 thought, oh, you do social media marketing, spend all your time on Facebook, ah, <laughs> like whatever, right? That's my uncle accent, right? <laughs> um, but it's social media is so much more than that. You yeah. know, I see Facebook ads for my brother's company. I'm learning about digital marketing. It's a lot of work and it's way more than just being on Facebook, right? A lot of people think with fashion blogging and Instagram, uh, social media influencing, you're just posting and getting money for like a great selfie or a nice glam shot. That's the misconception, and I'm, I'm sure it is a misconception. So please tell me, uh, as somebody who's got into the space, like, how did you move from kind of dabbling your feet into, wow, here's a picture at a mall or on a nice beach, and people are asking me about my flip flops or my suntan lotion or my hair or whatever, into making this a full fledged thing? Um, so long story cut short. So, uh, like I said, I was working with this company called Whoopler, but, uh, for two and a half years, are they still around? Whoopler? Uh, no, Whoopler shut down. What was Whoopler exactly? So Whoopler, when I was working was a fashion app. Okay. All right. So, um, I actually had done a shoot for them. Uh, and, uh, like I really liked the team mm -hmm. and, uh, while I was having a discussion, uh, with the boss, then she asked me if I'd like to join the team. Okay. You know? So that's how, like, uh, I got into Wookiee. Okay. A fashion app, like curates clothing and deals yeah, curates and clothing. Okay. And, and I joined as a basic fashion curator okay, then, you know, it. like, Super. even though I was, uh, like, you know, doing something else completely different. I wanted a completely different exposure altogether. So, but one thing that I did is in this two and a half years while I was with the company, I was extremely consistent with my blogging on the side, you know, okay. even though I had like a full-time job and, you know, I was working from morning till evening. I made sure like either I wake up early in the morning or like go during my lunch breaks or like weekends. So it was pretty difficult. But the thing is that you have to be consistent. Sure. Consistency is You're the talking key. about like, for example, posting 10 pictures like, yeah. on your Instagram. Yeah, there I'm talking to... about like, you know, how to make this a full time job. Sure. Like, it, but uh, see, right now what happens is like people are pretty confused is what I feel like they don't know, like, I mean, how to go about this. But for me, from the beginning, I wanted to make this a full time job. Okay. Eventually, you know, at some point. So you treated yeah. your social media, Instagram or Facebook or whatever as a professional tool. Absolutely. From, yeah. from 2016, 2017. Uh, I would say 2016, uh, like after six months of my blogging. Uh, so there was this friend of mine. Blogging uh, means WordPress, like uh, no, on no, the it, internet it, it or on was, Instagram? Uh, it, it was on Instagram and okay. uh, WordPress. Okay. Uh, so I had like a blog where I would uh, like probably like expand on the kind of outfits that I'm putting up on my Instagram. Sure. Like give better Understood. details, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of mine, Sheetal, so she's the one who gave me more insights about blogging because she was from Bombay and she was handling influencers and she told me how to go about this and how to basically uh, earn from blogging, you know. Yeah. So initially when I got into it I thought it was all about like you know posting pictures and uh, there has been times when brands uh, get in touch with you and uh, send you their products and ask you to review about it but for me I never knew about the monetary aspect of blogging then so when uh, Sheetal gave a completely different insight about blogging is when I decided that there is a future to this and uh, if I am consistent and if I follow certain things in a certain way eventually like I can leave my job and uh, move to blogging full time this was my vision from the very beginning like okay yeah so that's a fantastic question uh, lead into a question I had which is and I'm guessing this is what Sheetal explained to you yeah what is the business model for yeah, fashion absolutely. blogging if you yeah. could explain that I mean don't you don't have to go into too much detail yeah, yeah, but definitely, definitely. what's the typical day like how do you end up you know making this a full-time thing because yeah. the industry is still a new industry right yeah, so yeah. so uh the first thing first I mean you got to be very professional uh, it's not a fun, uh, you know, like job. I mean, if you're treating this as a serious job, so mm -hmm. uh, like starting from writing a proper email to like communicating it to the client to things like that. And uh, see, I would say like you can't start blogging today and, uh, you know, it, like make it a monetary thing tomorrow. It mm -hmm. doesn't work that way. Yeah. Everything takes time. So if you have your own set of audience and uh, if you have like, uh, you know, certain engagement that is coming onto your profile, uh, you can justify that with the brand and mm -hmm. take things forward. 
say for example uh, like i mentioned before like my feed is basically a uh, functional fashionable uh, you know stuff like everything that you see on my uh, feed something that you would see me outside with like i'd be yeah. wearing the same clothes or perfect the for same a job bags. interview or a friend's bachelorette or this anything, or that anything like yeah. whatever you see on my feed other things that i use on a daily basis so uh, my audience are the ones like you know who can connect with me with regards to the kind of things that i use and wear and also i look at this thing called affordable fashion mm-hmm. i don't go to like too much of luxury because yeah. that's not really my audience yeah. so when i set my audience it's easy for me to connect with the right brand sure uh because uh, like every brand requires a particular audience and uh, if the brand's audience and your audience match together is when you can take things forward understood so uh, before you continue so in order to kind of get started and to make a viable business model for this fashion blogging space yeah. you obviously need to start posting content and in, yeah. in the day of instagram and blogs yeah. like uh, internet blogs or wordpress whatever um you got to start at the most basic level start taking photos of yourself in outfits handbags yeah, bag, yeah. These i mean like it yeah. depends on like what your segment is so i blog about fashion beauty and lifestyle mm-hmm. not much of food like you do know, people so, know their segments from the get go uh no like i don't think a lot of people know their segments and that's why like uh some of them really don't um you succeed. know succeed succeed yeah. uh but like the people who know their segment and i i have seen them go up the ladder so like it's it's something that that you can see by your set see for yourself if you work towards sure like so, any other job yeah like in comedy for example there's a quote that the audience tells you what's funny about you yeah. you know and that meaning I may want to do a bunch of jokes about Modi or politics or whatever, but I find when I'm doing my shows, the crowd responds way more to my stuff about dating or about marriage. The IT guy. The IT guy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then I might do that, but for a crowd of fashion bloggers, and they're like, yeah. we don't get the IT stuff. Talk about the dating stuff or exactly. the social. So oftentimes. You know, you got to stay true to what you are, but you also got to recognize what your niche or what your Absolutely. target demographic yeah. is. Like yeah. nobody wants to see you uh in something a 75-year-old might wear talking about no. this dupatta or whatever the heck, no, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah. So it's very important for you to like understand your audience and connect with the right brands. Okay, so it's important to understand your audience and the right brands. So I'm just trying to simplify yeah. this for the like the 22-year-old, 25-year-old yeah. listener who's like I want to get into fashion blogging and it's easy for you to say cuz you already have 80,000, 70,000 followers and whatever. So if you were to simplify the 10 steps to getting started in fashion blogging from uh I mean, here's what I'm curious about. Yeah. Does somebody like I'm also curious, what would you do if Instagram disappeared tomorrow? Okay. Do you move into blogging? Do you move into writing? Do you move blogging by that I mean on WordPress or whatever. So If I wanted to become a fashion blogger tomorrow, if Sanjay Manning Tala said, "Screw this comedy and podcasting, I want to tell become people." A fashion blogger. Yeah, I did some stuff, by the way, some modeling. <laughs> um, like, how does one break into it? Is it okay? Open up an Instagram account. Don't put pictures of your puppy or your friends at a selfie at some bar, but think about your next thirty photos and why you're doing it, and then. measure your engagement like how does what are the five basic steps you would say for your first 3 months in fashion blogging um first 3 months in fashion blogging or six whatever okay yeah. okay yeah so um see it's very important for you to understand like what you are going to do like mm-hmm. you need to have a vision where you want to be before even the first yeah, post yeah before even the first big be- i'm talking about like how to start from scratch like yes. you know completely uh so you need to have a vision like you know where you want to get because you're starting from scratch right because when i started i already had like a follower range of 5000 or something okay. you know so it was easy for me to like tell people like oh hey listen like i have moved to this yeah but if you're someone who does not have anything have a vision so once you have the vision work towards it create content according to your vision and it's very important to have a an appealing feed because uh Instagram is all about pictures right yeah. so your feed should be something that is like you know eye catching and uh, something that's very appealing yeah uh, so like have a vision about that as well like you know either with regards to the colors or with regards to the kind of um you know subjects depends on like whatever you're doing 
and uh, next thing is use the right hashtags so hashtags basically help you reach to the larger audience mm-hmm. right so um if you have put up like you know a fashion content don't uh, like you know put up hashtags which are related to music or like something else unless and until you want people of that segment to see it you know so make sure you use the right hashtags and uh, instagram's algorithm has changed quite a bit so yeah like every week i hate yeah. these guys they should make some rule change youtube is the same yeah so promoting would really help you reach to the larger audience provided you set the demographics right correctly yes so uh, i mean again so to set the demographics you need to know your audience yes so only if you have a vision to where you want to get can you like you know go through all these small small things sure so it's very important to have a plan in place and uh, i would say consistency is the key so like consistency is the key to getting your career to take off get it everybody to, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> because like sanjay like i'm someone who has absolutely no fashion background like started from nothing you know like i knew nothing about fashion and i'm not even from bangalore sure so like if i can like i think anybody can so i feel if you have a plan in place you can like just get up there and one most important thing is connecting with people in the same industry mm-hmm. and uh, you know have patience patience yeah. is also the key to success so have patience because there are so many brands like a lot of fish in the sea so yeah. like you know there are so many brands out there looking out for influencers so like they are not going to go with the regular set so you have an opportunity yeah. it's just that you need to know what you are before even going to a brand because like while i was working at woopla i have seen a lot of bloggers connecting with woopla because i used to handle their social media sure. so a lot of bloggers used to like hit up woopla asking hey want to collaborate yeah about what yeah. who are you what are you so it's very important that's what i was talking about like hey collaborate yeah that's what they're yeah, like, like that's, i mean that's i used to be like like, <laughs> like 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 some girl is in delhi like hey let's Let's collaborate. Let's collaborate. Hey, who plus? <laughs> hey, yeah, okay. So I used to wonder, like, I mean, what are these guys even talking about? So this is where, like, what Sheetal told me helped. Have like a structure to like how you're communicating with the client. Sure. You know, there has to be a way, like, hey, like, you know, I- I'm a fashion blogger based out of so and so city. This is what I do. Like, you know, like why I like your brand. Why I think we both should be working. because i mean even as a brand i should feel like a bit convinced to take you on board sure. whether it's a paid barter whatever mm-hmm. you know like we need to have some sort of connection so yes. it's very important to have a plan in place understanding your audience and consistency okay so plan in place understanding your audience consistency and one more you said which is va- valuable for any digital profession which is patience patience yeah patience yeah. is huge and it fascinates me these days when a lot of people You know, it's it's ironic that we need patience in a time of very low attention spans and mm. people want gratification like that. Mm. But at the same time, it's like this is not some rocket science thing. No. Just like with comedy or fashion blogging or media, it's like look, anybody in this industry, whether it's Christopher Nolan down to whoever, will say if I can do it, you can you do can, it. Yeah. And the beauty of your industry, for example, is you could actually look at your first post Yeah. and just reverse engineer your trajectory yeah. you know and anybody's post and i'm sure things are deleted and rephrased and edited but guys and gals just do the work and that'll take you 80% of the way yet people Absolutely. people just see where you are today and they're like oh she's 80,000 followers 70,000 followers whatever but it's like no, no it's taken a lot you yeah, know like i'm patient and i'm consistent and when you are getting disheartened after nine posts that only got 15 30 likes each I've been there, I've done that yeah. and slowly it's just kind of crept up and now here we are, right? Yeah. So what are like do you in your uh what was the question I wanted to ask? Yes, you were talking about the fashion bloggers approaching people, right? Um what percent of your business or any fashion bloggers business is proactive versus reactive? Meaning does do a lot of fashion bloggers who are new in this space, 5k followers, 10k followers yeah. Are they waking up every morning and sending emails, "Hey, please, let's collaborate?" or is it just the emails come to them and they pick and choose what they want to do that day or that week or that month? Um like how much so, of it is is active lead building yeah. versus So I'll tell you like how uh like I worked towards it because uh 
like I, I don't know how it works for everybody yeah. but i can tell you how it worked out for me so what i did was uh, so say for example i was at a 10k following i used to uh, look out to people who are at the same level as me like with regards to the following range or like you yeah. know content wise like how are you looking at uh, your blogging uh, and i used to see the kind of brands that you used to collaborate with people like you know who are at that range because that directly means that they're open to collaborating with of people course, like that yeah. you know so i used to uh, make a list of brands and see which are the ones who connect with me and then approach them i never oh. used to randomly like you know go to a brand and be like hey you weren't like hey sheetal like, i saw you did a post with swiggy give me the contact i want to no, work with absolutely swiggy absolutely yeah, yeah. not like okay. that was not the way i uh, like you know went about blogging because like i said i had a plan in place and i was just like dude like in 2 years i want to be here I want to make this much money like you know I want to move from a f- like 9 to 5 job to uh like you know yeah. a full time thing on my own so like that that's what like if you have a vision it's very easy to work towards it so if you know who you want to associate with it's very easy to even convince the brand I see because yeah. the brand would be like okay fine like I see like when I look at your content I can see my brand mm-hmm. so let's let's do this together it's yeah. like that that's a fantastic uh angle because for example even with swiggy you know yeah. like i've uh i recently released a clip where i talked about um you know oftentimes you can't get home cuz the ubers aren't available and the rickshaw yeah. guys want 300 bucks so i was like hey guys do what i do and order your last dessert on swiggy from the restaurant you're in and go home yeah. with the guy <laughs> you know and then you'll okay. and i was like that's just a funny joke i had but i was like wow i should really approach swiggy Because I could easily write them a funny middle class, lazy stoner, Netflixy sort of script about order food and how great it is yeah. that we make your life. I didn't need to because I was like, whatever, I'm doing my other comedy. But if I was hungry to write a commercial or get into yeah. media, I'm sure it wouldn't be rocket science to find their person on LinkedIn or through my network yeah. and just get a meeting eventually. And so many people put this artificial barrier that that's not going to happen. But if you no. know your brand and you know your target, you can at least get a foot in the door through a friend or a message or LinkedIn or whatever. There are many ways to connect with a brand, you know. Like, and uh, talking about social media, nothing better than that. Like, you know, social media yeah. there are many ways to like connect with the brand. And also, like I said, it's very important to be connected in the industry with very like with various people. uh who belongs to like different segments in the same industry um because like see how we are connected like tomorrow like if you want to associate with swiggy, with swiggy like i can connect you with swiggy sure, sure, so tomorrow yeah. if i want to connect with an amazon you can connect of me with course. them like so yeah, yeah. that's what i'm saying so it's very important to have good connect in the industry so that you are growing with them sure so know? networking is very important very obviously very important yeah So I want to change gear not change gears a little bit um yeah. but uh with India in regards to India for example obviously you know things are different uh here yet they're also quite the same so how is our industry different in India per se than it might be in the west like what does a equivalent of a Kylie Jenner or you know some big I I don't know who the big people are I'm so I'm <laughs> yeah. so out of my wife would know but like What does a big influencer in India deal with differently than a big influencer in the West, for example? Um, see, one main thing is um, the following, because I have seen like people in the West has like a larger community compared to like the ones uh, like you know we have in India, and uh, like there are benefits and uh, you know like demerits about the same. Like if you know about the Fire Festival. Of course, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know the power of influencers. So yeah. Just yeah. because, uh, like, you have so many uh, good influencers who can connect with so many people, doesn't mean that they are always going to do good. Of course, yeah, yeah. and it, it's so funny <laughs> you bring that up because it was on my notes to talk to yeah. you about it, but I was like. I wonder if like any of our listeners will know but I'm sure it was a big Netflix yeah, it, documentary. Yeah, absolutely. For yeah. those of you who don't know the quick recap and feel free to add was there was a music festival like Coachella they tried to start they basically it was a catastrophe badly organized whatever but in the planning <laughs> they gave each of the big influencers like half a million or yeah. or one crore or whatever to post but they just took the money and put a picture yeah. of a yacht and a boat and said absolutely. wow but yeah. it ended up being a, a crap fest basically. So Um do a lot of in- so what do you do then if a brand uh comes up to you and says 
we want to give you five lakhs, 10 lakhs for this post, yet you may not be aligned with the brand or you may not, you know, it's like, uh, I don't really give a crap about this. Do you find a way to line it up to your brand or? No, like uh, there have been brands that uh, like, you know, I have said no to in the past, even though it was like a paid collaboration or whatever, because your o o audience like know you, like, I mean, they know what you're doing. So yeah. the minute they know that you're diving towards something else, they know that, you know, you're doing this only for like, you know, that commercial aspect. But where does that come from? For example, if I was a follower yeah. of like a Kylie Jenner and she's posting all these great elaborate handbags and products and things, but then all of a sudden she posts something about Donald Trump or she posts something about some other, pro like a digital camera, for yeah, example, yeah. that doesn't line up with her brand. Me personally, I wouldn't care that it's kind of, what's the word off brand? No, like, so when I say, um, you know, the brands that I would probably say no to are the ones who ask for direct promotion, like say, put this, put that, uh, like, you know, like they give me like what I should be putting out on my Yeah, Instagram. put Paytm has the best yeah, online like, ticket holder, booking. Like, you know, probably like, uh, you know, some statement, something like, you know, I, like that just doesn't work out for me and uh, like I, I'd say like one more thing about fire festival that I wanted to add on was uh, the first post that they um, actually put up was the you know orange tile and mm -hmm. that's how like everybody got attention to it you know so before we get into social media like grabbing attention from multiple influencers together like is what like any brand would be looking yeah. for. It's like a for. launch basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, when you, it's basically brand recall, I would say. So when you see the same thing in multiple profiles, you're like, oh my God, what is this? Like, I see. you're building buzz. Basically. Yeah, you're building buzz. So, um, it's very important for you to know, like your brand, do your research. I see. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the most important thing. There are different ways to work out with a brand. Like, like, nobody would think like Swiggy and Sanjay would work out, but the way you put out the content, of course, yeah, you yeah. know, so it's important for you to see if you can actually connect with the brand in some way possible. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Like you need to have that idea, either you or the brand. Sure. So if both of you can't figure out, that's when like it comes out as like a proper a paycheck, advertisement. Basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I a brand will connect with you. And it's up to you. Like you can always give ideas to the brand. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure like any brand that comes to you, you're not going to be like, okay, I'll do it. You would be like, okay, fine. Let me go through it. Let me get back to you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you need to work hard once you have the luck, because obviously the young kid who's just trying to make their first 2k, 5k on a yeah. post will take whatever they can yeah. get. But if I understood correctly, would you agree that if you do go off brand or you do start looking like you're just posting for money and there's not even a semblance of this sort of lines up with what you want to do. Mm. Um, for example, like book my show movie tickets for somebody who's a real estate influencer may not line up ideally. Right. Yeah. Um, then, but provided I'll tell you, okay. Uh, provided he, yeah, you know, like make the content in such a way that he's been, he had a hectic week and like he's going out with his family or friends to watch a movie. Sure, then after it can line up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So any brand can be lined up with the influencers, but the only thing is that it's very important to understand how, how are you going to execute this? Okay. Because then yeah. the in on, if you don't execute well, the inauthenticity comes out and then people and are, uh, people don't get the right message. They don't. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's kind of a double edged sword that not only did you waste a post, you maybe didn't even get the target what the brand was asking. Yeah. So how does a brand, and this is a general social media question, but I've been very curious about this in, cause I know, so outside of just your own personal Instagram, These days in the social media world, how do brands measure their return on investment beyond just, wow, we got 5 million likes and a thousand comments? Because what I see, and we talked about this offline, I have this theory that with geo and cheap internet and yeah. India is the cheapest place for internet across the world right now. Absolutely. And with that, you know, any like for example, Kim Kardashian puts up a picture, she gets 30 million likes, but she might get 20 million likes from some random city in <laughs> Ghaziabad that will never buy yeah. that $100 shampoo. Yeah. But the brands may not care because that person who hired her is just like, whoa, look, we got 30 million likes. 
But if 20 million of those will never ever spend, you are better off getting 10 million likes just from Texas or Los Angeles. So how do brands kind of filter through the clutter and the noise to actually measure actionable return on investment for their post, whether it's your post, my post, or a big, big celebrity's post. So I also have done influencer marketing for a couple of brands. So basically when it comes to influencer marketing, you identify the right influencers for a brand, right? Like, so that's, that's when uh, ROI comes into the picture. And have brands got very clever now when they pick an influencer to do a quick scan of their page to see if they're bots or not bots. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, See, a couple of things that has to be kept in mind before going ahead with an influencer. Um, So, I mean, it also includes like, it's, see, I don't believe followers are everything. um, Because if I'm promoting a 5,000 rupee shampoo, like, Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, from your followers, even if four people buy the shampoo. Of course, there's ROI there. Like, you know, there is ROI. Like, I'm getting at least what I, like, you know, put in or like maybe more than that. You know, that that's that's the way like I look at it. So wait, in a better way, I'll explain. So say, for example, a brand is there and an influencer. OK, so the brand is looking to connect with different influencers to do a campaign sure. to promote a particular product. OK, so this is the requirement that the brand puts across to you. So next thing is understanding what the brand's requirement is if they're looking at branding. So if it's only branding, there is no ROI involved. So if they're saying getting getting the word out, yeah, getting the word out. So that's when you go for influencers with higher following. Okay. And like, you know, people who are like, who can like spread the word out to the maximum. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that new pub opened up in UB city or, oh yeah, that new salon or whatever. Yeah. Now comes the next category where engagement. So there will be people with hundred K, they might have only 10 comments. You know, yeah. so there is no engagement. <laughs> that, is that's no- <laughs> my YouTube and Twitter, by the way, but I've never paid. But yes, go on. Yeah. So there is uh, not much of an engagement there, but there will be like probably a, you know, blogger with say 30K followers, but yeah. she might get 100 comments. Yeah. Okay. So she is, she basically has a highly engaged profile. Yes. You know, so when it comes to ROI, you always go for the profiles that are much more engaged versus followers. When you, when it comes to ROI. ROI, And yeah. when it comes to awareness and brand building, you, you go the opposite. You always go like with people who have like, you know, like more uh, people in their profile because that's my priority over there. When it comes to ROI, I have to give a validation to the brand why these influencers, and there are different ways to measure it. Okay. okay. So one of the ways is basically giving them a coupon code. Yes, and then okay. seeing how many act on yeah, that. How yeah, many, uh, how many probably used it. Another one is swipe up links. Mm-hmm. So you can see Track the number the of clicks and see all these things you can't basically do anything about because the brand is getting the clicks over mm-hmm. there as well. You know, you can't really do, you know, sure. whatever I'm, you know, talking about. So, uh, So that's one very important thing, you know. Understanding the influencer and understanding the requirement. If it's only ROI, you need to go for a highly engaged Gage profile. profile. Yeah. And yeah. also understand like if they're talking about the same thing the brand is looking at. Of course, the like, alignment. Yeah. yeah. Like if I'm looking at promoting, um, say, a hair product, see like if these influencers are talking about hair. Yeah. And if they're talking about hair products. Yeah. Because if they're talking about only clothing and one hair product like out of nowhere, yeah. then you know like it's not genuine. Yeah. So could they like a very famous like bald comedian, for example, promote <laughs> a hair product as a joke? And could that still potentially work for See, a that's brand? That's a joke. So he's a funny guy, right? Like, so, so it, so it does across, line like, up actually. So for- um like again, like I said, so when a brand is looking at ROI. Um, there are different ways like how they go about it. One of the very easy way to get ROI humor. is doing like yeah. uh, is humor yeah. and grabbing attention basically because when it's humor, what happens is like you're making fun of that product, right? Like so, yeah. like it, when that product comes to, comes into the picture like multiple times. You get that curiosity to check out what what is he talking about? I see. You know, yes, yes. but. When it comes to like a fashion blogger, like I'm just saying like why this guy was is like a fashion sure. blogger. When it comes to a fashion blogger, she talk, talks about different brands. Same product, different brands, like at different time intervals. Sure. So she's saying like whether this is better or like how this particular is different from the rest. 
but whereas this guy never talks about the brand but there's something very very different in his feed sure 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 so that's the way like i mean you differentiate like you know why this person versus like a fashion but, blogger but but in terms of for example but it still could potentially work if no but like i would never say an roi from that mm-hmm. uh because that's mostly like branding i would say okay i see understood you know because um like a person would rely on someone who has knowledge about that product, product. that that would lead to a sale versus yeah, that could just lead a to click a yeah, yeah. versus to like you know uh yeah generating just uh hype uh, initially i had asked you how is it different per se yeah. for india though yeah. so just to take it slightly back to that um what would you say are the number one things that stand out is our market way more segmented is our market way more uh unique because of all the cultures we have because an influencer for south indian fashion will not penetrate the market in delhi at all and yeah. vice versa so is there a lot more scope is there a lot more opportunity than you might see in america or is it just like see I, like opportunity wise everywhere there's opportunity like that's what i believe because uh, there's one influencer from india her name is masoom so she was also at the cans festival cans festival yeah, yeah. And, you know this year she, she was the only influencer who attended that festival so she talks a lot about global domination mm-hmm. so she moved from india to europe because she got married you know to okay. her like yeah. husband so but she What's created a mark there mosam uh, masoom minavla okay yeah Fine. so um so she all the guys are like uh, all the women are like, oh, you don't know like yeah, yeah. So, so like i i think like uh, you know she's someone like who break the barrier like yeah. you know telling people that this is possible yeah you know like an indian can actually do really kind of, well outside it's like nuclear playing in some amsterdam music festival or whatever it's like fine it's, okay you're penetrating beyond just yeah, india yeah. So, yeah yeah so like i said like i mean opportunities are there everywhere depends on like how you connect and how you plan it and take it forward but like you said like i feel like it's much more like out there like when it comes to west mm-hmm. india what is happening right now is people are still trying to figure out if they can do it as a full time if they can like you know probably like survive on something like a blogging like what is blogging like even my parents for the longest time didn't know what i was doing like it took me 2 years to convince them explain to them you know yeah. and taking them to multiple events even though they didn't like because it for me it was very important that my family knows what i'm doing of course yeah, yeah. so like if you are that patient and like you know but if you have opportunities well enough go ahead so you were talking about india and i remember the question i wanted to ask which i find funny as a comedian because i get trolled a lot on instagram on facebook whether it's the accent or something about it or something about india america i said um we are notorious in india for one particular thing and the good part about india is it's so cheap to get online that everybody yeah. is online The bad part about India is everybody is online, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think any girl can agree, any guy, you know, can agree even that if you just check your message request folder or you check your inbox oh that's God, unapproved, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um now that you've kind of streamed like I I assume a lot of females probably deal with this the second they move from kind of like just a social profile to this mix of fashion blogging and influencers, but you know, India is a place like any other country but India we're experts at judging and being judgmental and passing our own opinions on somebody who says something it's funny nobody ever complains like my neighbor could be BJP I could be Congress nobody cares but yeah. online it's a oh war oh my god it's a you different know? ball game yeah. yeah or in goa nobody cares you're in the bikini but on instagram they want to pass their opinion yeah. so do you deal with that have you dealt with that how do you overcome that do you just ignore it Do you see it as a sign that you actually are making an impression on people so whatever is working how does one in this field who wants to become a fashion blogger or a comedian or an entertainer kind of fight society's naysayers that are, are now so easy to see on social media Um so I'd say like it depends on how uh, you want to take it on social media like I personally do not really um interfere a lot in like public matters so you just uh no I don't mean politics I'm yeah. saying like for example when Madhuri was here she was yeah. saying you know she kind of overnight went from 5k followers to like 80k followers because okay. of her movie right yeah 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 and then all of a sudden she's at some wedding and she's wearing a sari and somebody's like how could you show that skin or like yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. the hell no like yeah. see see uh So like 
uh, why I said like I don't really involve in public matters is because like I'd like I try my best to like stay away from getting into like you know all these issues. confrontations yeah like yeah. you know all these conflicts but um, when you talk about like uh, people getting involved in your personal life like I don't think you can find a better example than me because like I'm from Kerala and uh, like I remember one thing it's, it's our professional expertise <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like yeah. one thing my mom asked me like Ashti like over years of blogging like your clothes are just reducing like what is happening <laughs> So I was just like, ma, it's not that way. Like, I mean, uh, like there is a different way to look at it. Like fashion is art, you know, like, so if you look at it that way, it's completely different because sure. I'm not going to be wearing those outfits on a daily basis. But if I'm at a beach, I can't be wearing like a burqa. Yeah. You know, it doesn't practically make yeah. sense. So I feel uh, I mean, if you are clear about like how you are dealing with things mm-hmm. it's very easy for you i mean you can shut them up like in the very beginning mm-hmm. rather than entertaining it because yeah. i feel the more uh, you give a leverage to people who involve like in dragging you to issues like mm-hmm. this if you give them attention like they're going to like just climb on of that of course because uh, i remember like a lot of people asking me like you're from kerala what are you doing i mean uh, this is not our culture like you know like a lot of people like it, it was really bad in the beginning but initially it did affect me a lot i was just like man like i mean my parents are also not interested yeah. in this like even the public is talking some nonsense and but like for me it was all about okay i am not doing anything wrong to anyone you know i'm not harming anyone end mm-hmm. of the day so if you are shutting them in the very beginning they know where to stand of course yeah, yeah. So, and it and in india especially not just kerala but pan i guess pan desi culture across yeah. the board not i mean india pakistan sri lanka bangladesh whatever is everyone is a critic until they're a supporter yeah meaning oh how could you quit engineering and do comedy or acting or fashion blogging oh how could you show a bikini or how could you say that thing about indian mothers or aunties whatever yeah, yeah, on stage absolutely. and then all of a sudden you get a million fans or you start making good money he's so brave and he was a pioneer it, this has da-da-da. very well happened to me because like uh, i'm not taking out names but there have been people who have taken screenshots of my pictures and sent it to my parents okay yeah. they're like oh my god look at your daughter what is she yeah. doing and everything but that's something about them internally that's bothering them yeah like yeah. and uh, like my parents only one concern for them they were like first of all like any indian parent they were like don't put up anything on facebook okay like yeah. the entire family <laughs> yeah yeah you stay away from facebook instagram yeah. is your zone yeah yeah then they like what is this instagram also like i mean we have family. i was just like listen ma dad you need to trust me mm-hmm. like you know I'm going to show you where this can take me eventually. Yeah. It's just one picture is not going to make any difference. Yeah. You know, it's you just look at it in a different way. You understand. Like it 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 all depends on how you look at a situation or like, you know, a subject like it's it's based on that. So that's all I told them and believe me like now 3 years later my parents like they tell me that i'm so proud of where you are right now That's awesome. like you know and like that is success according to me okay like i mean convincing something i mean something that i thought never could work out and they're really happy with what i'm doing so i have seen that if you look at things in a better and brighter way it's 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 going to like you know work out for you but if you're just going to sit and worry about like how things are going around you it's just like just going to like put you down. No, I love that because so many people it's such a lesson nobody realizes because people just think this success happens out of nowhere or m- miraculously, but especially in our society to kind of stick that foot out and try something different every single person <laughs> in any non-traditional discipline has this. And what happens also is I remember when I was starting comedy And a lot of my comedy was terrible in the beginning maybe even some now I don't know but like <laughs> people are like how could he say this on camera or look at why is he left Accenture or this that and a year later you get past all that yeah. and it's that first hurdle and now wow look at you know they're in a magazine or they're doing something where 600 people were clapping at this and that and I feel a lot of times I could be wrong but whether it's people commenting on me on on Instagram or Twitter or or you uh you know about some post you did or whatever a lot of times when people say that it's not necessarily about you it's about you doing that and makes them feel something about themselves yeah that, like uh, but, but i just I, i could never do that and how how dare she do that you know or um 
Like, like, as in, like, I don't have yeah. the balls to quit my job and do comedy, so I shouldn't support him for quitting his job to do comedy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that is a much, uh, like, I mean, I would say that is a way to look at it. Like, I mean, you, like, if you look at it that way, then nothing is going to stop you because it's just basically like, bro, you're jealous. Yeah. That's it. Like, no, like, which is also not good because then you're just like haters, haters, no, but, but you mean, don't like, take no, feedback. Like, yeah. See, I would say, see, it's very, very, uh, like, I mean, normal that even though you get like 10 good comments and if there is that one comment. Oh, it gets to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets to you. It ruins yeah, yeah. your day. Like, yeah. I mean, we all like, yeah. like, let's be honest, right? So like for me, it's Don't, just that like. We're going to get 10 great comments on this and one very specific. <laughs> like so, targeting yeah, you yeah. types, you know, like that's when you're just like, why man? Why me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, bro, <laughs> can't you see like the other 10 yeah. comments, like people who are being like so up there and positive and who's like, Go Sanjay or yeah. like go Ashti. It's and like this is one guy who's like, bro, you're not funny or like, yeah. sis, what are you wearing? <laughs> it, it's it's so, so funny because I feel like like I'll put a YouTube video and get 600 likes, zero dislikes, and then there's one guy who's like, nah, nah, nah. There has to be one, you know, <laughs> or like he's been riding too high. But but that's a, to to take us home on this uh, podcast. Then I think the last question I want to ask on that note is. How does one in your field where it's so visual, so public, you know, um, just like with comedy, the practice is in front of the public. You know, you can play a guitar at home till you get the song yeah. perfectly, but you'll never know how good that post is or that joke is until it's out there in the world. Um, how does one in your line of work distinguish between or differentiate between criticism and trolling and proper feedback and constructive criticism? Okay. So, um, like, I mean, see, now there are different ways how you can even connect with your audience. Okay, one of the, like, features that Instagram offers is that Q&A thing. Um, so, I think it's very important to, like, connect with your audience and understand, like, what they like, what they dislike. It need not necessarily be published, taking out, like, a story and putting it up there. Hey, I spoke to this guy. Mm -hmm. She said yeah, this. Yeah. She said that. Like, I see, like, that a lot. Like, I mean... See, if somebody is messaging you in private, that means they want to talk to you in private. Yeah. You don't have to take a screenshot and put it sure. up as a story. So I, I feel, do that all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm building my brand. Yeah. No, like, yeah. see, th there is a different way to look at it. I mean, uh, depending on the subject, if somebody is like appreciating you and like, you know, if that's something that made you really happy, you put it across, like, that's sure, okay. But yeah. I have seen like a lot of people just like if somebody would have told like, hey, I don't think this is going with this. Oh, then they're like, how dare he yeah, say like, that? I mean, yeah, like, you know, that that's like way like too much of negativity sure. for me. Like you're unnecessarily creating drama. And you're amplifying your negativity yeah. by giving attention to that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I feel to be um, like positive and safe in this field is to be very well connected with audience. Uh, like do like things like Q&A and stuff like that where you can connect or lives or like even when you're putting up post like put up post where you can engage with your audience you know like like it could be something like okay this is what I'm working on so what do you guys think about yeah. it like let me know you know like I would love to know what you guys like to see on my feed or like uh, like guys like I genuinely need help do yeah. let me know where I'm lacking or, so that's like genuine feedback that's coming to you you know and people like that sincerity i think yeah, yeah and and they definitely do because like your audience are there to like uh look at it in both ways right like mm -hmm. okay there is one segment who would love to see what you're doing and there is one segment which would be like okay fine like you know uh, i think sanjay should do this or like ashti should do that so i think like it can go to the next notch sure so interact in a better way and uh Take everything in a positive way is what I would say. Like if you get upset about each and everything, it's very difficult because, mm -hmm. you know, you are in the limelight and like yeah. not everybody is happy about like what is going on in your life because there'll be so many other comedians or like other bloggers who'd be like, do like, why is she like, you know, I'm so much better than her. That would also be true at times, but thank our stars, like, you know, like sometimes you do better than somebody else, but take everything in a very positive way. Uh, take feedbacks as feedbacks and not as criticisms because end of the day they are following you and yeah, they yeah. are giving you a suggestion of course so, yeah i think that's a hundred percent fair and you know everybody would have dealt with this had social media been around forever you know if you were a model in the 80s just on magazines you didn't have the luxury not luxury but you didn't have, you didn't know what people were really thinking now you do but it doesn't mean they weren't thinking it back then right yeah. whether or not they liked you or they didn't like you or whatever 
And it's it's great to me. One last thing I, I want to say that uh, I forgot to is I think in both of our careers and pretty much any any venture that you do is number one, own it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. It, it bugs me so much when people are like, you just posted that for attention or you just posted that. Like I'll comment on my comedians, friends, Instagrams, and they've got way more followers than me. Some of them are doing better politically in that space. Some of them are doing better in like an entertainment space, but I'll comment on their picture, like great photo. And people are like, you're just commenting here because you want us to follow you. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like go <laughs> fine. My goal on social media <laughs> is to interact. Yeah. And look, I'm not saying follow me, follow me, follow me. But yeah. if I can comment on somebody's thing with a joke and that joke gets 5,000 thumbs ups on my comment, and then some guy is upset that my joke has 5,000 thumbs up and that might give me a hundred more followers. I'm like, I'm just playing the game, bro. How Absolutely. is that different than going to a panel in the Leela talking about comedy with yeah. 10 other comedians? It's the same thing. And I have, yes, I make videos so people can watch them. Absolutely. If, Absolutely. If I didn't, this podcast would be on my hard drive, not on the internet. So it's like, own what you're doing. Yeah. And I, it bugs me so much when people are like, she is just posting that because she's trying to make money. Yeah, we all are, dude. Yeah, like, so, I mean, you're not paying our bills, right? Like, yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, we have to, like, make something out of what we're doing. Yeah. Like I said, it's very important. Like, Sanjay, you knew, like, you wanted to do this, right? Like, so, like, you had a vision. And you're, like, still doing this after so many years. Yeah. And you can see yourself, like, you know, like, growing. So, that's what makes you happy. Likewise for me. So, I feel like, you know, we both are somewhat like similar, like in the, you know. Everyone who sits at this table is similar to a comedian in some way. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm sorry, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, yeah. no, no. I mean, like, uh, it's not about interrupting. So what I what I wanted to say was uh, just own it. Like you said, like, if you got it, like, just slay it. Like, yeah, yeah. That's it. And uh, people are just going to talk like whatever. They're just going to keep on going. It's up to you to decide like who you want to take along with you and who you For don't sure. want to give attention to. And it's so funny, like like you said, like the commenting bit. Yeah, like, I mean, if you're getting attention, it's good. Like, I mean, because you are making a difference in between so many other comments, which are like yeah. going out there. So and it's, it's just, the cream rises to the top in any field. If you're good at something, if you are funny, if you do get some... Uh, notoriety or whatever for it that's fine because I have plenty of sh crappy comments I've made that have gone nowhere and then nobody cares and no one says anything but when you do something well yeah people just for some reason are like uh but I love that and the biggest thing I'll take away from this specifically with social media because I think that's taking over mm -hmm. that is a facet of everybody's life is patience consistency and there was one more thing you said about have that. Have a plan. Have a plan. And this has been the best thing for me to hear that I, because w by the time I got to know you, you already had, I think, 50, 60,000 Instagram followers. We acted in that made video. But I was like, wow. But I did not know that you sat down with a pen and a paper or whatever. I, I'm like completely old school. Like even now, like I sit with a pen and paper because yeah. for me, planning is very, very important. And like, Nothing is like, like, because we're talking about social media, like you don't even have to like try too hard. Everything is out there in the yeah. internet. All you got to do is research. Yeah, Understand yeah. your mediums and like make maximum noise and get out there. Understand your mediums and you will be much more than medium. You will be way above average, you guys. <laughs> so that was my crappy joke to end this. But uh, Shruti, thank you so much. Thank you so I much, I really Sanjay. appreciate it. And uh all of her social medias will be there on the description if you just want to shout those out really quick for our listeners. Yeah, guys, yeah. like, please follow me at uh, Ashwati Balakrishnan for, like, fashion, lifestyle, and That's Instagram? content. That's yeah, Instagram, Instagram, right? Okay. Yeah, now, and you can also follow me at ashwatibalakrishnan.com for, uh, like, my blog. Okay, I, yeah, so that was one final question I had. If you guys are still listening, please do rate and review us and all of that. <laughs> um, what would you do if uh, Instagram disappeared tomorrow? What would most fashion bloggers do? Would they just go to the internet or? like what would they do no so like like i said like i all, all already have an alternate career like where i do social media strategy and content for like a couple of brands. no but what i'm saying is for fashion blogging huh. specific not not what your other lines of income are huh. but if you still wanted to get the word out about your great outfits and fashion tips okay. would you just oh, stick okay, to a website okay, like blog that. yeah uh, no like i don't think i would just stick to like a website mm -hmm. i would probably get into youtube because i feel that's the next, next big you know 
game changer. Of course, yeah, because then people will want to see longer content and yeah. that sort of stuff. Because like I've seen how if you look at Instagram's pattern, like this was predicted like a like a while back. Like I remember when I was doing like my uh, previous uh, you know sit down with like other couple of bloggers. Like we uh, like we had discussed saying that YouTube is the next big thing. But if you look at Instagram, Instagram is moving towards YouTube. They have already introduced IGTV. IGTV yeah. So you know, uh, from pictures now, they've realized that people like watching things, and that's how like you grab attention. So yeah, YouTube is going to be that one thing that's not going to die at least for the longest time. Is what I feel. So yeah, I don't think. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> I hope so because I'm doubling down on YouTube as well. This will also go on YouTube, guys. Thank you so much, Ashwati. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Sanjay. It. Thanks a lot, dude. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. A birdie num num. That's right.